Well, if uh, there are no questions, then let me move on by describing the system that forms what we are going to refer to as capacitor. It's actually a, a setup you have seen before. Let's uh, use this as an example to um, example of working out electrostatics for a particular situation. So imagine this setup. You have, um, let me call this parallel plate capacitor for reasons you'll see soon. So imagine this plausible physical setup. I have two conducting plates of some uh, large area. So this is the side view of the uh, parallel conducting plate. So here's the plate one. So it's, uh, this plate is conducting and area A, and I have another plate that's also conducting, also with the area A. So this applies to both, uh, both plates. And um, with this conducting plate, um, this is what I'm going to do. So they are separated by some distance D, and I make sure that they don't touch each other. Um, because if they touch, it'll be a problem for what I'm going to do now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect both of them to a battery, um, uh, um, to a voltage source that's going to provide some amount of voltage difference. So this end is connected through a conducting wire. This end is also connected through a conducting wire to a battery. Let me draw it like a car battery. Or something. Actually, I realized I don't know how to draw a car battery. Negative plus. I don't know what it actually looks like. But it's a um, it's a um, it's a voltage source providing some voltage V naught. And for convenience's sake, we can say that this negative terminal here, this is at zero volt, and this positive terminal, this is at voltage of V naught. In, so uh, you, are, uh, you are visualizing this kind of setup where I have two conducting plates, one connected with a wire to some uh, end of, one end of battery. So this is at zero volt. Um, the other end is connected through wire to the other end of the battery. This is a voltage V naught. Um, and I just want to confirm. So when I say the plate is at zero volt, do I have to? Um, what feature here can I point to to say that the entire plate is at exactly zero volt? It's not just at this point where it's connected. It's throughout the entire plate, I can say it's at zero volt. Like so a part of this description here uh, allows you to say that, that once I connect this with the battery, it, once I connect a single point with the wire to the battery, then I can say that this entire plane the, from one end to the other is at zero volt. What allows me to say that? That it's a conducting plate. So this is one of the properties of conductor that we brought up last Monday because it's an important property. Um, so at electrostatic equilibrium, electric field inside the conductor is zero. That means once you say voltage of one point, then you know the voltage of every other point on the conducted, uh, connected conductor. That's also the other reason why it's so important for me to stress that this other plate is not touching it. Because the moment this touches, they both have to be zero volt. But I want to put this other plate at a different voltage. So it's, um, so it's connected only through this battery, which is providing the voltage difference. Good. OK, um, so this is the setup. And I, does this feel like a complete description of setup? Like, if I asked you to build this and gave you conducting plates and batteries, you can set this up, yeah? Yeah, so this is uh, what will serve as our uh, static electricity example. And um, there are a number of questions we can ask about this setup that's all already determined. So let me just write down a few of them that uh, we can answer based on what we know about static electricity. So 
um, I'd like to ask, I guess, two things. That's some basic dynamic quantity that's useful to know. First is, well, I want to know what is the electric field around the setup. As an electric in between and electric field outside. Let me call them regions one, two, and three. I do like to know something about electric field in regions one, two, and three. And once I apply voltage, I'm sort of going to assume that um, there must be charges around here somewhere that's associated with these voltages. So I do like to know the charges. So how much charge on both plates, uh, I mean, on, on the negative plate and on the positive plate. So these two are basic electrostatic questions that I can ask. And if this is a complete description of the setup, there must be some way of getting from information that's provided here to the electric field. Okay, so, um, so you know, this is a sort of a review slash example. Based on what we have covered about electrostatics so far, um, you should have enough information to answer here. So how would you get to electric field? Chris? Oh, I thought you were OK, while you guys are thinking, let me write down some of the um, information as uh, um, the things that you should have, you should, you should know, should sound familiar. And I would really recommend that you have memorized by the time you get to exam two. Let me start writing them down here while I do that a couple minutes. Uh, think about how you would look for electric field using the information that's provided there. Um, but while you are thinking about that, let me just write down the information here so that in case you don't have them memorized yet, <laughs> you have a chance to see it. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm only going to write down information in shorthand. I'm not going to explain a bunch of stuff because it should be familiar to you. All right, I think that's it. In terms of definitions and formulas that you are supposed to know, I think that's a comprehensive list. Right? It's not a long list, but you know, for you to be able to say you understand what these are, that does take, you know, that's what we covered for like three, four weeks. <laughs> so um, there's, but you know, this is a reminder to what we have been covering those three, four weeks. And you know, based on these, how would you say we should look for electric field here? Like what information given here could you use? Yeah, voltage is the quickest way to get to it. So, um, so Kate is looking at this definition of elect, uh, voltage. And one of the key information that's given here is the voltage difference from this point to this point. And we should be able to relate it to the electric field, electric field, and some geometric information here. Uh, yeah, so, so this, once you realize how to approach this question, this is actually a really simple question, right? Yeah, so, um, so let me just imagine a path somewhere in the middle so that I don't have to worry about any complications. So going from this point to this point here, uh, my change in voltage uh, here is V0. It's increasing by V0. So for part A, what I would say is uh, label these points A and B. So chain vo change in voltage going from A to B, which is equal to V0, is going to be, so, oh wait, wait I always forget this, sorry. There's a minus sign here. <laughs> um, so that's uh, equal to, if I write down the full expression, it will be integral from A to B minus E dot dx, but it can be actually a lot simpler than that. 
Like in this situation, do you know, can someone tell me how this simplifies? Like I don't actually have to do the integral. I'm not going to do on any actual integral. But allows me to avoid doing this integral altogether. Not, I, I actually, uh, um, the formula is derived from Gauss's law, symmetry but. Hmm? Of the plane. So symmetry of the plane. So what you are, so what Kevin is looking at is this. In this setup, it would be really nice if we could treat this as an infinitely large planar charges. If it was, then we could use this formula here. Right? Which says the electric field for a plane is really simple. It's a constant. I don't, there's no distance dependence at all. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to use that. I'm going to say, uh, based on my familiarity with electric field of a plane, I'm going to say, um, so, um, so in the problem statement, I didn't say it quite yet, but I will say um, in the, in the limit where this area, or rather square root of area, is much, much larger than the distance d, we can treat this, approximate this, like they are infinite planes. And we are going to say our electric field will be like electric field due to an infinite plane, which is constant as a function of distance. So I can say, as I imagine doing this integral, I don't have to do the actual integral. I can just uh, pull the electric field out, and this will be just minus elect the constant electric field times uh, delta x going from A to B. Good. All right, so the left-hand side, the, um, the change in voltage, as I said, that's a V naught. Um, that's a positive value. So let's say, so this is the, um, so um, this is my, this arrow that's already drawn here. This is my delta x going for A to B. Um, what direction is the electric field? Based on what you see here so far, would you say electric field points to right or points to left? Points to left, right? I have to do this dot product, multiply by negative to get a positive answer. So that means the dot product should be negative. So, so you know, as you're answering this question part A, you fill in some of the information that you weren't given to start out with. But this is the information that you have to start filling in if you are understanding the setup and you can answer part B later. So there's going to be electric field pointing this way. Um, so this is my um, sort of electric field line, more or less. Um, so my uh, delta V naught, um, or my V naught is equal to, um, so let me use the, this symbol here. The magnitude of this electric field, let me call that E naught. Then V naught is going to be equal to the magnitude of electric field, E naught, times the separation D. Here I'm dropping the signs because I just want to know the magnitude of electric field. But this is a correct expression. So you get this is really simple expression in the end. E naught is equal to the voltage difference divided by distance. Yeah. It's a really simple answer. And um, now what I don't want you to do is memorize this as a formula. Because this is a, a sort of a designed scenario where this will be true. But if I change one little thing, you know, make this a cylinder, for example, then this won't work anymore. This, this is simplifying step that we did depends on that this is a planar situation. Yeah? yeah. So are we saying that the electric field is like the same strength between along all the fields? Yeah, so oh, at all these different points, um, at, at all these different points in the space here, the electric field is uniform. How, no matter how close you are to the plate, whether you are in the middle or how close you are to the other plate, they are all at the same strength. That's the result you get if the planes were actually infinite. Now, they are not actually infinite, but we are saying we are going to approximate it as being infinite. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, any questions about this so far? By the way, I realize I haven't really been talking about, uni talking about units a lot um, when we are doing electrostatics. Uh, let me talk about units a little bit now so that I can at least say that we have gone over it. 